Are you building your blog on HubSpot and you want to make sure you optimize it for SEO? Well, let's walk through the most common things you need to do inside your blog posts to ensure that you have the best chance of ranking on a search engine. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. Blogging inside of HubSpot is one of the most powerful things you can do to create content to attract your audience to your website to convert and become potential customers. But there isn't such a thing as an easy button for you to be able to push that content out to your audience and have them easily um, come to your website. It's a much more comprehensive process than that. However, there are a variety of things that you need to do inside of HubSpot to optimize the blog for what's called on-page SEO. On-page SEO are things that you can do in your control on your website, or in this case, inside of HubSpot, to ensure that search engines understand the content of the page, the purpose of that content, and whether or not it will satisfy what's called search intent. And that search intent is the reason that someone types in that phrase to get to something or an answer on the internet. So in this case, I have an example pulled up of a video marketing guide that we created a couple of years ago, and I'm gonna walk through this to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So let's dive in. So right now I've got that blog post pulled up inside of HubSpot, and this interface, again, depending on what level of HubSpot you're in, HubSpot blogging is only available to you inside of the Marketing Pro or Marketing Enterprise Edition. So this interface may look a little bit different depending on what your blog template looks like, but the the tips remain the same. So we've got a variety of things. First, before we even touch your blog post, what you want to do is ensure that you have selected a phrase that has a high search volume and a relatively low level of competition. So if you're not quite sure what that means, I'm gonna include a link in the description of this video to a video from SEMrush, which is a tool that allows you to look for search volume on the internet as far as what people are typing in, what search phrases, how much volume, and what other pages are ranking for it. Now, if you wanted to use a tool inside of HubSpot because you have HubSpot Pro or Enterprise Edition, uh, I will jump over there real quick to show you what you can do inside of HubSpot as well. This has to do with our HubSpot SEO tool, which we have another video about that, which if you wanna head over there and check that out, again, that's in the description as well. So to get to that SEO tool that I just talked about, you're gonna go to your marketing dropdown, planning and strategy, and click on SEO. Now what this does is it allows us to see specific uh, topics. So we click on topics here and we can search for new topics and we'll click on add a topic. And then again, just like you might in a tool like SEMrush or Ahrefs, which again, both of those are much, much, much more powerful than what we have access to inside of HubSpot. But again, we're gonna type in video marketing and I'm gonna click add. And you will see that the monthly search volume here is 4,400. Again, these are rough numbers and the difficulty is 71. So if you happen to hover over this, this gives you a definition of what the difficulty is. If you happen to do this inside of a tool like SEMrush or Ahrefs, you will see additional results. Who is ranking for it? What does their blog post look like? Again, I encourage you to go look at all of those best practices because you can expect to rank there's no way you can rank with a piece of content that is not at least as good as what's already ranking. Okay, so I'm gonna step off that soapbox for a minute and I wanted to show you this because video marketing, again, has a high search volume. But what I see a lot of people doing when they go to optimize a blog post is they optimize for something that, again, they think is the keyword, but they haven't done really good research. So if even I wanted to type in marketing for business, for example, and I click in search, I've got 9,900 and there's no word video in here. So if I type in uh, business videos and I click add, I've only got 320. So you have to think about what your search intent is. Each one of these phrases, it's very different from a standpoint of what the searcher hopes to find when they type this into a search engine. So in this case, we selected video marketing guide because what we were looking at from a search perspective was people want to know how to use video in their marketing and they're not sure where to start. So by making it a video marketing guide, we would answer that search intent and then we'll jump back over. Let's look at the page and kind of how we did this. So again, back in this blog post area, we've got a title. So we've got this keyword in our title, video marketing guide. So the title, in this case, this in our HubSpot blog template is styled as an H1. Now, if you're not familiar with on-page SEO or what H1s are, H1s are called a header tag, and that is your, your biggest header tag. Each page should only have one 
header tag. And in this case, that's going to be the title. So I put that keyword in our header tag. The rest of the blog post or the rest of the blog post title here in this case does give me an idea of what to expect when I scroll into this. So this is one area. The second area, as you scroll down your blog post, you're going to see that there's a variety of when you compose um, specific blog posts, you want to create subheads that give people a chance to scan the article. So really good optimization of a blog post includes subheads and bulleted lists so you can quickly scan the information and stay on a page because if you don't, if people get overwhelmed by the information, what might happen is they just quickly bounce off and they don't come back and actually consume the content. And time on page, spending time reading that content is a key indicator of how good your content is to Google. So keep that in mind. So if you go through this article, you'll notice that we've got discovering how video helps you connect with your customers. We talk about, again, how the, tr the uh, trends have changed, adding video into your strategy. So basically, Here's why, here's how, here's some goals on how to do it. And then as we go further, here's how to create the actual content. So again, I'll include this blog post itself in the description of this video so you can go and actually like spend some time with this blog post and really study it and figure out how this is portrayed so you can essentially copy this same sort of strategy. So these subheads are very important. What you want to do in the subheads when you're optimizing blog posts is think about that phrase, video marketing, and what are synonyms or other terms around that phrase that make sense to the reader, but also have a chance to, re to guide them through the blog post in a way that uses relative um, uh, related terms. So that's the next step. So we've got, again, this all this content here on this page. Um, if we go back up to the top, one of the most important things that you'll notice here is we've got some additional, um, what we would call outbound links in the content. So where we've got these green pieces of content, these are hyperlinks. They are styled as such in our styling sheet back on the back part of HubSpot. But a good optimized blog post, you wanna have a good amount of outbound links, so at least two or three outbound links to content on the internet that essentially supports the things that you're saying. So that way what it does is it provides credibility to your blog when you're linking to a piece of content that already talks about this and performs well. The other thing you wanna consider doing, and you'll see this, I won't click over in this blog post, but some of these links in here are links of ours to other pieces of content that we have on our site about video marketing. And so by linking what's, it's called interlinking, by interlinking your blog posts and your articles and your pages inside of your website, you have a chance to pass that page authority from one page to the next, and it gives search crawlers a chance to follow that trail when they're looking for content to serve up to the searcher. So again, if you go and study this article, you'll see that we have quite a few different, these here are external links, but as you go through this article, you'll see that we have one out to HubSpot. We've got this link about video helping it all stages of the sales and marketing funnel, which is a blog post that we have. And you can actually, again, jump off this page and go actually down a rabbit hole to learn that here as well. So internal, external links, very important in optimizing your blog post. The next thing is going to be creating an opportunity for search engines to understand what images mean inside your blog post. I see so much of this where images are just placed and they're kind of just like, it's an afterthought. They're placed to help illustrate a key point, but some of the technical information that you would need from a search perspective is not there. So if I hover over this image here and I click on it, we've got two things. We've got the alt text. The alt text is both used by search engines as well as people who have visual impairment because their software programs will read them what that image um, alt text is. So in this case, we've got four, four most common videos, um, and this is actually the name of a PNG. So if I were actually optimizing this blog post, I would actually recommend that my team change this because this is the name of the image, also very important. Go ahead and make sure your images are named so that when the search engines go out looking for image results of videos, they come up on an image where it's not 5612.png, but instead it's four most common types of videos.png. When you're naming an image, you want the image name to be dashes between the words 
Don't allow spaces. When there's spaces, search engines automatically insert a percent sign. You may see this, but they insert a percent sign. We don't want that. So in this case, I'm gonna call the alt text here. If I look at what this image is, we've got the four most common types of videos. So I would actually change this alt text to not just be the name of my image, but I would name this to the four most common videos for marketing. And notice again, I've managed to insert some opportunities to optimize my keywords here, but I've done it in a way that's not stuffing keywords in because that is not a good user experience. And then you end up, you may get penalties from Google if you do enough of that on your page. So we're gonna change that here. And then if I have a hyperlink, I could actually hyperlink this image as well. If there was another blog post about the four most common types, which again, we don't have, but if I wanted to, I could link that here. If I was to replace this and add a new image, how you name that image in here actually comes down to the details. So you'll notice that I've got, um, this is the name of the image and I would rename that image before I inserted it. So if you have any questions about that, drop those in the comments, be happy to walk you through that. But uh, at the end of the day, what I really want you to take away from this is make sure, make sure, make sure that your alt text does actually give the search engine an understanding of what that image is. And then we also need it to be human and readable so that if someone is reading it with a visual impairment program, they happen to get that as well. And we don't want keyword stuffing, but we do want it optimized around those keywords that we talked about in the initial part of this video. So again, optimizing there, very, very important. Now the last piece is going to be um, these bullets. So if there's an opportunity to rank for what would be called result zero. So let's say I type into a search engine, um, how, uh, let's see, tips for video marketing. And that might be a commonly searched phrase. And if I type in tips for video marketing, sometimes you get what's called result zero or the featured snippet is what it's called. And the featured snippet might show um, a bulleted list. And that is a really great way to have an opportunity to rank in that result zero. So if I wanted to optimize for this here, I might say, um, you know, questions that you would need to ask when starting a video. Again, this isn't how we wanted this content to be portrayed. So we did not choose to use that strategy, but again, that would be an option as well. So the rest of this here is uh, back down to formatting. Again, the alt images, uh, alt text for your images, very important. But then if I go to this optimize button here in HubSpot, you'll see that I've got a variety of things here that I've got um, some checks. So this kind of gives you like a thing, uh, a checklist to run down when I'm actually looking at my blog post in LinkedIn. So do I have meta description on my blog post? That's gonna be over here in settings. And what you wanna make sure you do is you need to have a strong blog title. Again, in my template, this is what displays on the title, but you may have a different setting here. Make sure your blog title contains your keyword and is human. And then you want to have um, your tags here are going to be how your content's organized in categories on your HubSpot um, blog portal, basically. So we want a couple of tags, but not so many that it's overwhelming. So one to two is usually satisfactory. And then this meta description is, this is one of the most important things you can do is include your keyword in this, write it so that it gives you an opportunity to invite the reader to click through and create a little bit of curiosity out of that. If you're unfamiliar with meta descriptions, I highly recommend that you go to the Google, um, Google blog and read about meta descriptions or go to Moz and learn about those. SEMrush and Ahrefs also have very good content on meta descriptions as well. But you wanna be able to um, you know, essentially promote the content. Meta descriptions now range from 155 to 265 in terms of how many characters you get. But Google, or excuse me, HubSpot does recommend that you stop at the limit of 155 to make sure that um, you know you get your message across before it gets truncated. In this case, we are over on this example, so we might wanna consider updating this meta description. So if I go back to this optimized screen, um, it's gonna give me a variety of things that are essentially like a check mark to make sure that they are good. So yes, I want to make sure that it, like does it display well in the search engine? If this was red, you'd wanna look into that. Mobile friendliness, we've got, uh, some of this goes into how your template is set up. So if you have a red X here, again, probably wanna reach out to someone who can help you fix that. The page body has subtopic phrases. So again, like what the HubSpot um, uh, interface is suggesting here to me is, I might wanna consider actually including these phrases in my subheads. So this might be something I actually wanna look at because it's been a while since we wrote this blog post and these video has gotten a lot more popular since we first wrote this. So I'm gonna go back and actually optimize 
those subheads I just talked about and adjust some of those phrases to better accommodate the keywords that are associated with this whole um, topic. And then if I go to meta description, it does mention my video marketing, the word that I'm trying to optimize for. The title mentions it, which is great. The content, you wanna have at least 300 words in a blog post. If you look at the type of content that performs on search engines, typically a blog post of about a thousand words or more long form content, those are the ones that typically perform the best. So keep that in mind because the blog post is a thousand words or 1500 words, not something that's usually written in an hour or you know an hour and a half. It does involve some good research, some good, I mean, really good outlines. And again, as we've walked through here today, making sure it satisfies that search intent so that the searcher ends up with the answer that they're looking for. Um, the title, we just talked about that title. The domain name is unique. Um, the title 70 characters or less, just like that meta description. If your title's too long, it gets cut off as well. So Moz has an excellent page title length checker. I'll include that in your description below. Our team uses it all the time because it's really handy just to make sure that you know roughly how long your title can be. And again, that's characters includes spaces. So then for the meta description, we talked about the meta description. I've got a green or excuse me, a gray check here because my meta description is a little bit longer than it should be. In the header, I've got a single H1 tag, just like we talked about in the start of that video. And then all my images have alt text. It looks like the I've got two images in my blog post that in fact are missing alt text. So I need to go back and fix that. And then I've got a variety of inbound and outbound links. The best practice for HubSpot is less than 300 outbound links. I will say if you're even nearing 100 outbound links, you're probably sprinkling too many throughout the content anyway. It's rare that we see a piece of content with you know, more than probably 50 to 75 outbound links, but again, everyone is unique. So 300 outbound links, that's gonna be the top limit. So if you wanna see all SEO recommendations in one place, you can click on this here, but that's the gist of it. That is how to optimize your blog post inside of HubSpot. If any of this looks unfamiliar to you, or you think, you know what, that's a great video, I get and I understand this, I don't have time for it. If you need some help with that, feel free to drop us a comment or uh, you know, feel free to send us an email. We'll be happy to help you out and talk with you a little bit further. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you have any topics or things you're stuck on you want us to talk about in our next upcoming video series, let us know and we'd be happy to help.